So everyone, thank you for joining our session. Um, I'll give you a little bit about Utopia, who we are, so you understand the uh, context of the information that uh, PJ will be describing to you. Um, we are indeed a global enterprise data solutions firm. Uh, as you can see here on the slide, wherever there's yellow, we have operations and offices, and we conduct business. And and um, we have a rather large experience base with inside the SAP ecosystem. Um, we practice our principal methodology called enterprise data lifecycle management, which is essentially cradle to grave data management. Everything that helps you derive actionable responses or what we call actionable analytics from your data. So, uh, you know, whether it's uh, data aggregation, data strategy, data management, uh, data operations, or even data archiving and legacy system decommissioning. If it has to do with data in those enterprise systems, we do it. Um, we have a very rich client base. Uh, one of them is oil and gas. Obviously, we also do uh, have customers in utilities and transportation, but today's focus is going to be principally on the oil and gas sector. Um, so with that, without further ado, I'd like to uh, go to the next slide and turn over the floor to VJ so he can get into the content. Over to you, VJ. Thank you, Frank. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is VJ Ati, and a very warm welcome to each and everyone, wherever you are on the globe. Today's agenda, uh, typically, we are going to focus what SAP HANA is, what is the vision and strategy for SAP on SAP HANA. We will also take a look on the solution overview a little bit into the high level architecture and then we will also see the vision where it is going to. And finally of course we will cover some very important use cases in the oil and gas industry which can leverage SAP HANA and be utilized going forward. So let's jump ahead and uh, there is a very funny thing about this picture whenever I ask them what does this bottle look like and most of the time I get an answer saying it's a champagne with some vitamins in it. Somehow I don't know why that's something. But anyway, this is the current scenario in the IT industry where we have increasing data volume because of the data being utilized and being enriched every day. On the other hand, you have the calculation speed because of the I.O. issues going down and also with so many data sources or the databases and typically different kind of programming languages being used, there are always some issues with the disk storage and how the databases work internally. So combining all these issues, what we are doing today is a very suboptimal execution speed where you do hardly have any response to the important decisions that you want to make. Because of this, you have lag in your business transparency. So what happens is your operational reporting and your analytical reporting are on both different sides. So in that way, you sometimes or most of the time have outdated data. And because of which, uh, there are some missed opportunities and in this current competitive world, it's very important to be on the edge whenever you are talking about the business. So in that way, some of the organizations are seeing some degradation in their businesses. That's the reason they wanted something which can actually help them stay on the ground. Okay. And that is where SAP HANA came into picture and it started working wonders for the client. And as SAP talked about HANA as a new game changer, definitely let's see why it's so called. See, SAP HANA in a very nutshell is something very much as an in-memory computing. And what in-memory computing is, it's basically a technology which can process massive loads of data in the main memory of a CPU and which can actually provide immediate results in a flash. So this is the concept SAP had in mind uh, when they wanted to create something like an SAP HANA. 
Now, what are the advantages of such a scenario? First and foremost, the data is no longer stored on a hard disk, which is a mechanical device. So, what happens is the I.O. issues are taken care of because now the data is stored in memory and it is lightning fast. Before, we had storage issues with because of the hard disk where you could only store X amount of data. But now with in-memory being so vast, you can now store terabytes of data in memory. Recently, IBM provided SAP with a 100 terabyte SAP HANA appliance, which actually talks about such a big uh, scenario. More important, the data throughput, which were currently about 10 GBP per, per second, are now about 100 GB per second. What it means is if our current highways are like 10 lanes, the future or SAP HANA will actually help being at 100 lanes. So similar amount of traffic, but now will be spread across 100 lanes. So the data input and output will be much faster. More important, you also have freedom from your data source. What it means is any database that is being currently used on various applications can be utilized to HANA and you will have a single source of data and your database will be completely from HANA. And all this actually happens in a real time scenario which is much better for any of those uh, scenarios where the organizations want to be cutting edge. And in the oil and gas industry, it becomes much more important because things change in seconds or even in uh, milliseconds. That's the reason HANA plays a big role in all of these scenarios and it helps typically the organization to have some real-time analytics. It can help improve the business performances and finally this will give a competitive edge over the rest. Now, if you go into the internal part of HANA, what exactly it is, it is a combination of hardware and software technology innovation. On the hardware side, we are now using about 8 cores of CPUs per blade. And initially it was about 1 core per CPU. But now you have 8 cores and this hardware is being developed much rather fast by Intel. And they also have failover and standby options in the process. What it means is if the CPU analyzes one of its core might fail, automatically it takes the load of that core and it basically provides it to another. In that way, the failovers or hardware crashes are 99.99% eradicated. And of course, I was talking about the 100 GB per second data throughput and also 64-bit address spaces and you have about 2 terabytes in current server which are being implemented now to about 16 uh, as I am speaking. Coming to the software part, the data in a regular database is stored in a star schema or an extended star schema if it's an ERP or a data warehouse. But in HANA, it is very much stored in a row and column. The reason being, when you are reading or writing through the RAM, it becomes very easy if the data is stored in a row and column wise. So that's the foremost advantage. Second, HANA also has a software or an algorithm which are built in which will compress the data which you are storing. For example, if you have a 100 GB of data in your ECC, when you move the data into HANA, it gives you approximately 10x compression. What means is, the data that is stored now in HANA will be about 10 GB, not 100 GB. And in uh, comparatively, if you are doing it with BW, it gives you about 5x compression ratio because data is more dense as well. So that's the advantage having compression. And on top of it, now you can also have no need of partitioning unless the table sizes are more than 2 billion rows of data which normally are not a regular scenario, but if really needed, we can do that as well in HANA. And because of all these innovations, you don't need any more aggregate tables to save spaces on your hard disk 
or database and most important all these can be stored on a real time basis. So there are some replication technologies like SAP SLT which is the system landscape transformation and also data services which will give you a real time a near real time uh, uh, data capture. So let's move ahead. This is a complete overview of what HANA exists as today. But initially when it was launched about a year, year and a half back, it was purely considered as an in-memory database. But if you see now, there are so many other plates which have been implemented now. Like now you have R and Hadoop integration. You have real-time replication services. Planning and calculation engine are built in. And there are so many uh, other application services like HTML5 and all these new technologies being implemented into HANA so that the clients can get real value of it. And on top of it, you can do the reporting using any of the existing BI 4.0 solutions. And SAP is also working on integrating other BI solutions like Cognos and other tools so that the investment that has been already made on the reporting front can be utilized. So that's the other good thing, what, what's happening uh, down the lane. And of course, you always have the option of replicating the data from either your ECP or with your BW. It can be also non-SAP data. So in that way, it is covering the whole 360 degrees of the uh, data point, which will actually help uh, going forward. This is a very much on a high level architecture of how HANA looks like. If you see the bottom part which says SAP applications, non-SAP data sources, it means the data from these can be replicated into HANA. Then you do slight modeling on top of it which can be helped uh, so that your reporting tools can utilize those and you have your analytics, your reporting and everything taken care. This is the long term vision that uh, HANA has and if you see it's a unified database throughout where your ERPs which can be SAP, SAP ERP2, any new applications in the future that might be incorporated in the organization and also any of the uh, data warehouse solutions like BW and if you also have some non-SAP based applications those can also be integrated to HANA and then you will have one level of corporate BI solution. It could be your SAP BI, it could be Cognos, it could be anything which basically will be certified down the lane by HANA. In that way you will have a single data source and this is what is the vision of SAP going forward. We have been interacting with many of the clients uh, because Utopia plays a major role in the HANA space and we along with SAP found out that these are the top 10 reasons why the organizations are looking for a solution like HANA. First and foremost is the speed and also other parties it is not in an order number it is just the top 10. So speed, agility, insight, these will all give you various scenarios which can help the organization go from point X to point Y in a much faster manner and also it will give you more insight about your existing data. In that way you can see more business models and in that way those business models can be utilized to create more revenue streams. So these are some of the things that basically are helping uh, organization from the HANA point of view. And of course, there are also some customers who are looking at the cloud solution and that is uh, very much uh, happening as well because Utopia is one of the first and foremost organizations to host HANA and cloud uh, in the SAP scenario. On top of it, SAP is also working with other service vendors on the innovation part which are going to be building various apps 
for various verticals in that way HANA can be utilized in every possible manner and that's what is part of the innovation. Now what are the key benefits? Most important if you are uh, looking at the scenario of HANA it can help you with your operational data and also with your analytical data and on top of it when you are combining both of these it will also help on the CTO part which is your IT infrastructure maintenance and the change that basically happens. So in a real time basis we will have the data available at any point of time. In that way it will give a reduced dependency on the IT. What I mean by this is presently if a user wants to look at his report in a different way chances are he has to basically go to the IT and ask for a request which can typically take from hours to day. And in the current scenario when you are using HANA and any of the existing BI reporting tools, the user can himself actually change the way he wants to look at the data and in that way it will help going or dependent on the IT part. And that's one of the very key important points because IT executives when taking important decisions, uh, Gartner says 47 percent are not sure about that decision being on a right direction. And something similar with HANA will actually eradicate those issues because it will give you the data the way you want and in the perfect manner which is very important. On the operational side, it becomes very frustrating because especially during the month end where the production support is happening from one end and there is operational inputs happening and the reports are being pulled in from another end. So in that way it is leading to a lot of uh, low IO and that's where HANA will actually come into picture and help in a real time basis because read and write HANA is very fast and also the locking of tables just happens per millisecond in that way there is no latency at all. So that's what it means by zero latency. And of course you can actually have massive or large volumes of data being analyzed at single point of time. And as I was also talking because of your non-disruptive existing IT strategy, HANA can just blend in without changing much of the scenarios in that way helping with low TCO and also helping with the latest technology uh, like HANA which is pre-configured appliance. And most important your ROI is much faster when you are looking at the uh, savings down the lane in the next 250 years. One of the examples on the ROI recently we were talking to a customer who was running an um, X database I would not name it uh, and he was asked to pay about two million dollars per year for the database licenses to move from one version to the next. And similarly at the same point when HANA was actually put in place as the uh, competition it was uh, much better or cheaper by about 16 percent. So that itself shows like if for one year there is a savings of 16 percent on two million dollars you can really look at down the lane for 5 years or 10 years which can be much better. Now let's go into the scenarios of the HANA in oil and gas business. Because the business is so volatile it becomes very important on the production loss analysis. What, what exactly is this problem? See what happens is in production loss analysis the need to extract uh, more hydrocarbons from the existing production field increases. So the upstream companies must integrate uh, different functional sources of information to provide a holistic view of the performance. Uh, for example, uh, to identify the root cause of a potential production loss. So today you have only limited visibility across the production network as it is difficult to integrate technical as well as the business computing system which can uh, provide you with a complete operational view 
of your uh, producing effect. But with a solution like HANA, what happens is that it will help uh, analyze those massive amounts of production data and also the operational condition data, for example, your uh, maintenance data as you see here, uh, with lot of data mining and the capabilities, which will actually help finding the root cause of why this production loss has happened. And because of this, the result of the maintenance activities can be quickly uh, initiated so that the profit uh, can be kept as on the same ground. Uh, here some background noise there. Okay, we are good now. And then, of course, your the benefits as you see is improvement in your operational efficiency. So more uh, amounts of uh, production uh, fields can be uh, extracted, and then increased production from your existing assets can also be helped with. Because now you can analyze all those massive amounts of production data in a much faster manner, which used to take a lot of time before. The second scenario is like oil and gas exploration optimization. And this is a very big problem. The reason being, uh, if you also look at the current market, despite increasing uh, focus on the renewable energy, the reality is that demand for the oil and gas is still very big. And as the low-hanging fruit of the oil and gas deposits are running out, energy companies are now forced to drill deeper and uh, hunt in more remote regions and to target difficult deposits. And to do this, uh, they are using information technology to boost their production and profitability. So oil and gas companies are now using uh, technologies like distributed sensors, uh, high-speed communications, uh, data mining techniques to uh, monitor and fine-tune those remote drilling operations. And, and they want to use real-time data to make better decisions and to predict problems. And this was not happening uh, till date because there was no technology which could actually help turn these details perfect. So typically, the engineers are viewing data feeds from down the globe at a centralized uh, drilling optimization center. And they are in looking for a cutting edge data analytics and visualization uh, technology which can actually combine uh, both of these collaborative features. And despite the enormous size of the energy industry, uh, the technology being used today is still quite optimal. And to optimize the profit, the energy companies now need to locate software like HANA, uh, who can actually have a state of art solution for handling these massive amounts of uh, data in the exploration uh, industry. So if HANA is being used around this scenario, the typical tech analytics and data visualization will actually help these energy companies uh, to enable all those dramatical improvements in the speed and depth of analysis which their uh, engineers are working as of now. And with those massive amounts uh, being explored uh, in the data part, you can actually do the analysis at the any level of granularity. Uh, for example, one of the uh, uh, F&B clients, they could actually only look at their stock uh, till the city level. If they wanted to go one level uh, left, less and look at the stock in each and every store of the city, they could have never done that. But now with help of SAP HANA, they are now able to go to that level of granularity where they can now look at the stock of each and every uh, subject. So that's the advantage when you are talking about the granular uh, situation. And part of uh, the cellular challenges is also from the credit management. And uh, this problem often uh, is because of the inconsistency in the credit data in the ERP system, and that's when uh, the credit reorganization report basically has to be run 
uh, to validate and correct the existing uh, credit data. So the credit reorganization report will calculate a uh, credit of all open case documents in the database and then it corrects the credit values in the LIS table for each of the accounts. And depending on the size of the database, this report might run from about a few hours to maybe a day or two sometimes. So the sales tables typically under these scenarios are locked for the entire sales time. And thus basically the whole business scenario uh, is getting disrupted. And while the credit reorganization report is still in process. So to have a solution for this kind of a scenario, uh, SAP HANA is one of the best parts. The reason being the credit correction report logic, uh, which typically is the core uh, for the highest oil, has been replicated in HANA with a new data foundation, which can actually help uh, run this report in matter of seconds to minutes, which initially used to take about a couple of hours or more, now can be done in minutes or even in seconds. The reason being, when this is being run with HANA, the tables are also not locked for a large amount of time, but just for a fraction of seconds. In that way, uh, all these can be eradicated. And uh, what also happens is the basic business is unaffected uh, because of this short locking time uh, during the report run. And of course, the rounding of errors is also eliminated so that the analytical capabilities in the real time is, a, is actually enhanced here. So this is one of the other uh, important uh, use case which can be signaled, which can be utilized in the oil and gas scenario. And most important of all of these is also the stock overview and forecast. Because our companies in the oil and gas industry are dealing with thousands of materials for spare parts, the management of these spare parts inventory uh, becomes very critical as it directly affects the company's cash flow. And in order to analyze the stock and categorize these spare parts into, for example, a dead, slow moving or a productive inventory, uh, you must have the full transparency of your inventory at any point of time. But however, in real-time analysis of the inventory is currently a challenge because of the high data volumes that have to be taken into account. For example, uh, millions of material movements in data records happen every minute. So it becomes a big challenge to maintain this uh, inventory. List. And this is where SAP's uh, in-memory technology like HANA allows you uh, to get real-time transparency into the spare parts inventory and, and significantly reducing the reporting time. So based on the historical consumption, uh, you can do a forecast of the in inventory and uh, actively uh, do the changes and also stop the required whenever it is needed. So benefits typically will be managing the provisioning and the delivery of spare parts. And you can also avoid stockouts for the required spare parts because you now know what is to be done if suppose X spare part is required. And considering the same scenario in one of the uh, industry, now the, for example, if a factory is manufacturing a to C. These are the three products that it is manufacturing on a day to day basis. Because it does not get any real time feedback from the uh, store, the manufacturing situation is like it will still continue to manufacture the same ABC at the same rate X, for example. But if there is a need for product A, and the need for product B is decreasing, whereas product C is still the same. Now the real-time inventory uh, stock can be actually transformed to the manufacturing unit. And now they can actually increase the production for material A, decrease the production for material B, 
and keep the same production level for material C. This is being happening as of now by utilizing HANA, but before this never used to happen. So most of the time the situation was understock or overstock, but never uh, to the scenario where it is actually needed. So HANA started to eliminate all these uh, issues. And uh, with this, what I would like to share now is the deployment scenario. Now we have heard how good HANA is, but now what are the scenarios of how HANA can be implemented? There are five situations as of now. The first one as you see is EPC to HANA. What I mean by here is you have your existing ERP, which is your EPC, SAP ECC, or your business suite, whatever you call it. You are still having a database which is your primary database. Then you replicate the data into HANA from this primary database and will HANA become your secondary database. But your reporting will now happen all from your secondary database which is SAP HANA. This is the first part. The second one that you are seeing is SAP Business Suite powered by HANA. This has been very recently launched about a month ago by, HANA, uh, by SAP. What it does here is it will completely remove the primary X database and it will be replaced by SAP HANA. So you are no longer need to use your Oracle, uh, IBM or any of the SQL servers from Microsoft. So you can utilize HANA directly as your primary database. This is what SAP Business Suite powered by HANA means. The third is the SAP NetWeaver Business Warehouse to SAP HANA. Here again, it's very much the similar as the first situation where your BW will still run with a primary database and HANA will be the one as your secondary with data being replicated on a near on a real time basis and reporting happening from your secondary database which is your SAP HANA. The fourth scenario is where the business warehouse primary database is taken off and it is replaced by SAP HANA. So now the data replication will happen directly from ECC into the HANA database. So this is the fourth scenario. The fifth one of course is from any of the non-SAP to SAP HANA. So if you are using uh, JDE on Oracle or if you are using any of the other scenarios with a different database on a non-SAP technology, still SAP HANA can play a major role as your database for faster reporting and all those 10 points that we have discussed earlier are during one of these slides. So these are the five deployment scenarios and in that way which can actually help uh, get on to the scenario of how you can actually implement SAP HANA. So with this I am almost done and I hope uh, you have understood what SAP HANA is by now. You also understand where SAP has its vision and strategy when you are talking about SAP HANA. Most important, how this technology is a game changer for your business. So I have just spoke about core business scenario, but it could be more, which, which basically you are currently uh, feeling at your organization. So there could be a scenario which can be helped out and can make your organization into a cutting edge scenario which till date was basically hampering because of the uh, technology that being used. So hope this basically has cleared some of those questions. With this, I would actually like to pass on uh, to Frank again and Frank, all yours now. Thank you. Hey, Jay. And everyone, I really hope you enjoyed the very informative session from VJ. I have a couple of topics I want to close out the session with you before we open up uh, the floor for questions and answers. 
the first thing, uh, first point is, we have uh, at Utopia, we have a, what we call our Utopia Labs. It's a very sophisticated uh, demo environment where we host the majority of SAP applications in the cloud uh, and multiple versions of them, whether those applications be Business Suite, MDM, HANA, BW, or BI. And um, the importance of this particular um, of Utopia Labs is it allows customers, prospects, and others to come into our labs to load the data into our infrastructure and actually see their data running live on those SAP applications. You know, in other words, it proves to you, you know, that you can truly attain what we call actionable insights from your information live. And, and it's one thing to, to go to a demonstration, um, whether it be in person or virtual, and we can support virtual definitely from Utopia Labs, but it's another thing to see that same demonstration running on your on your information. And so with that, uh, Vijay, would you go to the next slide for me, please? Thank you. Um, so with that, what we are offering in order to demonstrate the power of HANA to you and, you know, to demonstrate Utopia's capabilities here, is we are offering a SAP HANA proof of concept. And there are different degrees uh, and levels of sophistication to so these proof of concepts. Um, a, if we get a small sample set of your data, something less than oh, 32 gigabytes of data or so, we can potentially do a free POC for you on HANA. Depending on the size of the data and the amount of reporting that you would want to do or see in your information, but what it does is it allows you to witness the speed of HANA. Uh, it tests to the simplicity of the loading. Uh, you can watch us uh, develop the attributes, the uh, calculation, analytical, and um, uh, uh, those attributes, those views, I should say, and allows you to ask questions you know, of the experts as you're looking at your data because nothing grounds the concept and that theory better than to see how your information actually runs in HANA and we, for those POCs, we use uh, SAP Explorer to browse and explore and drill down from that information all the way down through, say, um, high-level sales information down to the individual sales orders and uh, purchase orders. So with that, um, I'd like to turn the floor over to Terry so she can open up uh, the Q&A session. Terry? Thanks, Frank. Um, the floor is now open for questions that you may have. You can enter them into the question pane located on the right-hand side of your window. We'll, open as, we'll answer as many as we can, trying to be respectful of your time as well. Um, and while some people put some questions in. We did get a few throughout the presentation. Um, the first is, what level of SQL standard does SAP certify to? If we're to consider a non-SAP application on HANA, it's important to understand how compliant HANA is with the SL SQL standard. OK, I can uh, take that question. First uh, and foremost uh, thing is, SAP HANA is currently certified for about 34 different databases. What it means is, if your current database is existing part of this 34 uh, listing, there will be no issues with regard to the SQL or whatever way the data is stored in those uh, databases. If it is falling above the 34 uh, databases we are talking about, that is when a slight change in the SQL might need, but this can be actually handled within HANA uh, with the uh, SQL that HANA uses. So in that way, it will still help you migrating from any of your existing databases into HANA in a clean way. 
Okay. Um, from another participant, um, they missed how, uh, VJ, you said HANA impacted 15% license savings per year. You gave an example. Um, they're asking if um, HANA replaced the back-end RDBMS in that scenario. That's right. So, okay, I will give you a complete background. This was actually a banking customer. They were presently using the Oracle 10 g uh, as part of their existing backend, and they wanted to upgrade from 10 g to the 11, and for the each year they were asked to pay two million dollars, and that is where Hana was taken into place as an option initially, because as presently in the market there is a misconception that Hana is very costly which actually is not when you are really looking at these insights and after doing those calculations they really saw that in next two years they were able to actually save about 15 percent of just the licensing cost forget about the other uh, things that come into picture but 15 percent was a massive amount when you are just talking about a upgrade from one existing version to another and in that way, now they are planning to take off the back end completely and uh, plug in SAP HANA so that you still have the real time advantage which comes in, which was not present. And more important, you now have a transaction at lightning speed so that it will actually help this banking customer uh, attain what they are actually looking from the real time business scenario. Okay, next question. How are you using text analytics in exploration optimization? Good question. See, what happens is the text analytics will actually help you as part of the scenarios where you have data coming in from either a structured or even unstructured manner. So, for example, if you have your social media. All the input from the social media about, for example, a product which has been launched can now be taken into consideration by various web crawlers that we use. And these web crawlers will actually go to the data, extract them, put them into the SAP HANA so that you can actually start analyzing what are the feedback from the uh, people out there are different scenarios and then you can utilize these in the text analytics to see how many people are actually liking the product, what are the uh, points that they are looking for which were not uh, enhanced in this version or maybe in this product so that they can be incorporated in next uh, going further, uh, uh, further scenarios. So that's how is just one of the examples that I can think of right now. Okay, and our last question, so we can be considerate of time today. I've heard that Business Suite is now available on HANA, but what needs to be considered before we move our ERP system over to HANA? Uh, this, this is a good question. Uh, as said, yes, that's true. Business Suite on HANA has been announced about a month back. There are some minimum uh, requirements uh, which typically depends on what version of your business suite you are running and also on the service or support pack that you have installed. So based on that, uh, it depends what kind of level you can actually enhance to be completely powered by HANA. And if you can just send me an email, uh, I will actually go to the next slide. And uh, in that way, I can actually send you a document which actually covers all the minimum requirements for the business suite to be on HANA because there are about few number of things that need to go through as a checklist and that document will actually help you go through that. So feel free to send me that email. Okay, so I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today and taking time out of your day to learn a, bit, a little bit about the use cases for SAP HANA in the oil and gas industry. I'd also like to thank Frank Dravis and Vijay Ati 
for uh, leading us in this session. Please remember to fill out the survey that you'll be led to following the webinar. If you'd like to learn more about Utopia, you can visit our website, www.utopiainc.com. Uh, DJ's contact information is up on the screen, so if you have further questions that you didn't get answered today, feel free to reach out to him, and I'm sure he'd be happy to address those for you. This webinar was recorded, and as soon as we have the recording available, a link will be provided to you. We look forward to you joining us in the future for our next webinars, and we hope you have a great day. Thanks.